A while ago I made a sort of light-hearted model of a peel tower um, and didn't say much about them and kept promising oh I should do a little film about peel towers. So here it is. Peel towers are um, an interesting phenomena of the borders region. Um, they're the result of uh, an unstable border for many centuries in the Middle Ages, largely from sort of the th first few years of the 1300s into the first few years of the 1600s when uh, the Kingdom of Scotland and the Kingdom of England were united. So they are a reaction to border instability uh, and it's, uh, it's worth seeing them in a little bit of context. So basically see if I can do this. You cordon off the piece of land which is important to you. So create a little box and the felt tips running out of ink already. So in effect that's our peel. That's our chosen bit of land. And what we do is we build ourselves a farmhouse. So around about there. Don't do that. Uh, wall it off. So yeah, this is walled. Need a little gatehouse. And then usually something substantial-ish there. So barns, workshops, that kind of thing, brew house, storage, all of that. And then time goes by, trouble comes along and you realize this is this is going to happen more and more so increasing problems come along and therefore what you do is you build yourself a tower that you can run to in times of trouble you don't live there you live in the farmhouse and in fact give yourself a little extension and there you are with that is your peel tower so that's the um, that's the rudimentary side of things. Obviously, as time goes by, you end up with all kinds of barns and sheds and lean-tos and shacks, and they evolve into full-on buildings. And then you build yourself a bigger and better gatehouse, and you enlarge your farm, it turns into a bit of a manor house, that kind of thing. In some cases. They fall by the wayside and they become ruins. In other cases, all of this turns into very big, very glamorous, uh, ostentatious, uh, you know, marvellous country houses that just happen to have a tower in the corner. So just using a reconstruction painting, here we are with a gatehouse in a walled courtyard. There we see the kind of storeroom brew house kind of thing and there's the farmhouse with a, a wooden um, stairs up to a door at the upper floor. That means that you can um, dismantle it, smash it up or burn it if anybody's attacking and you're fairly safe in your farmhouse. And there's our tower. That gives us an idea of the kind of the very very basic layout. Um, I did this painting for a display it was going to be copied so it's rather blank on the right hand side because that's where a load of blurb about peel towers was going so this got copied and blown up and there we go anyway so here we are in our landscape the towers vary a uh, fair amount so these little corner turrets and things are, are optional the kind of tower that I had the semicircular one on the left now in this one is a block that starts halfway up. They tend to house staircases um, and the towers tend to be accessible either from a wooden staircase again or from within inside the farmhouse. So this is a version of a similar thing but now it's expanded, grown, bigger gatehouse, all of that kind of thing. So let's have a look at one proper. This is the Vicar's Peel in Corbridge uh, and it's actually just projects into the churchyard as you can see. Um, sometimes the Vicar was the only 
sort of authority figure uh, for a few miles around and they end up funding this kind of thing um, and uh, this is a very typical one this is a, the archetypal peel tower and it's in pretty good condition for one that isn't attached to a later manor house that kind of thing so there it is this was big enough to allow kind of friends and family of the vicar or the whoever the power broker was in the area to uh, squeeze in and join in the defense so the I the problem was that in the area around the borders there were reavers bandits who would raid to and fro and do cattle rustling and all of that kind of thing they weren't very interested in large-scale highly technical sieges so a tower like this that everybody could run to slam the door behind and pull up rather than pull up a drawbridge pull up a staircase is exactly the kind of thing that would keep them at bay unless they had a, a particular grudge now we're at Horsley Tower um, somewhat different in construction but similar in its location there it is the broad very boxy thing not the slender tower that we saw earlier um, all the windows are pretty much modern because yep people live in this one um, and you can see it is a very very strong looking building now these are I mean, in many respects they're part and parcel of the idea of a tower uh, as part of a castle but also they are sort of small landowners the lesser wealthy gentry who are building these just to look after small patches of ground and territory so we're walking through here we're walking up to a church and just like the Vickers Peel in Corbridge this church is uh, right next to Peel Tower so the relationship is there yet again and there we are with the tower you can see it from this slightly different side again windows um, forced in for more modern living and once again you can see how this side the, the slimmer side is about the same as the broader side of uh, Corbridge then you can see a more modern building attached you can see that all the windows are very uh, of a piece and they're very broad crenellations when you see the smaller crenellations they tend to be um, later modifications to make the place look prettier so here we have a very sturdy very substantial tower and you can see the wall on the left doesn't have any windows in it at all and that gives you an idea of how these things were originally so here we have a castle in miniature for a local landlord who needs to defend himself against the wild reavers of the area. Now the next thing to do is go on a little circuit about 10 miles or so and it's really to show a group of towers that sit around Rothbury which is sort of where I end up going more often than not for the basics got a good co-op and a hardware shop and that kind of thing and a rather nice nice bakery down the bottom of the um, down the bottom of the town and this is um, also to show that these people are who are building the towers are not working together this isn't some kind of synchronized thing they've just happened to have a piece of land and enough money to build a decent tower but it shows how intense the problem must have been in this area and how one can overlook another so if each one of these sees a problem coming along and when they do they light a beacon then you'll see that each one can warn the next this is the Coquit River stylized it's a winding river and very uh, a beautiful river I've seen a little bit of it in one of the little films this is the town of Rothbury which at one time had where the church is there was a minster so it was very wealthy way back in the dark ages so a settlement builds up around that and there's a river crossing a bridge 
probably started off as a ford. First of all, there's a tower on the other side. So let's just get a bit closer. This is just one of my doodles. So there's a tower here. These grey lines are tracks. So we follow the track this way. And we get to Tossen, hence the T. And then we go off and we loop around. We cross the river just out of sight. And we get to Heppel. Both Tossen and Heppel are very ruinous, um, which is rather nice to just take a quick look at them. Um, just the sort of uh, just a peek at them. We won't be lingering on them particularly. Take the road back, veer off up this way, and we go sort of this is an area called Thropton, and we go up to Cartington. And that one seems to have been of some substance and overlooks, overlooks the plain which several rivers run through, joining up with the Coquit. And then come back down here and back into Rothbury. So there's a handful, just a few, but within a tiny space. The other thing is I've put on some interesting little orange sort of squares. These are pre-Roman, Iron Age or older hill forts. And you can see how this area has been of some significance for probably 3,000 years at least. Um, and it gives you an idea that this uh, sort of river crossing and pass between hills has uh, been one to sort of keep an eye on for a very long time. And just way off in this direction, one more Peel Tower at Elston, just out of sort of view of this map. So that's our itinerary. Like I say, we'll just be getting glimpses, quick looks, not great investigations, but just to show how you can do a tiny little drive around 10 miles or less and pass all of these. There's plenty of other things around here. There are a few other Peel Towers that are so overbuilt that you can't even see them. There seems to be one at Thropton, um, which is very hard to find. And there's fortified farmsteads, so farm buildings themselves that can be defended without towers. And a whole lot of other bits and pieces that relate to all this struggle that's going on. There's Tossen, somewhere in there the tower, and up above that flat topped hill is an old Iron Age hill fort. So here's the. Oh, and the zoom's going wrong again. Here's the valley, and then turn around, and we've got a peel tower in the trees. Once again, somebody lives there, so I won't disturb them. But there's our definable edges. Although this is just the other side of the river from Rothbury, this is actually Witten, um, just up the slope there. So you can see that, you know, regardless of where the the town or village is and where the market is and all of that, the local person has to defend themselves as best they can. Now to Tossum, as we saw in the distance, overlooked by the Iron Age hill fort. There it is, somewhat different to the ones we've seen so far. This one clearly is not lived in. Um, and you can see the way it's had its rather nice outer faced stonework ripped, a, ripped away around the bottom level. That's where folks were taking it all apart to build the local houses and farmhouses in once these towers were no longer in use. This is if you sort of stand at the tower and turn to, in effect, the sort of uh, your left. 
you'll see over in the distance this ridge and just into that ridge is see if we can find it up there amongst the trees see that pair of trees just to the right there is um, another hill tower that will come to shortly at Cartington and you can see that although these aren't built to um, to sort of work together they would use things like um, lighting beacons, lighting fires to warn one another that uh, trouble was on the way and it's valleys like this one the river Kokibans that allowed the reavers to pull through at extra high speed so this is all very important stuff um, there we can see some of the locals just having a nice time in the shelter because it's a rather hot day uh, this is a different occasion when I went and it's not such a hot day at all but once again you can see the sturdiness of the stone and how it's all been robbed out so here we are turning again to get an idea of um, the kind of landscape that we're in and if you go as we see we're heading sort of facing a little bit more north and northwest that's the kind of valley that these reavers would pour down and way off to the west is this one which we'll just glimpse as we drive past that's about all you're going to see really this is Elsden another one that's lived in it's been well restored it's in very good nick and then just up the road from there, Heppel, another one, which is in a ruinous state, but it's in somebody's garden. So once again, we're not going to poke around, but look, there it is, just sitting in the little village of Heppel. All of these are placed around the Coquit River. So now, see that block dead centre? That's Tossen again just to get our bearings. We're looping round, we're on the other side of the Coquit River now and we're looking south to find that one. And we're halfway between an awful lot of these towers just sitting out in the open and you're surrounded by them and as I say, any trouble coming down the river valley these folks would light beacons and there'd be a warning for everybody. So that's quite a significant um, little spot. Then we turn up the hill to Cartington. We saw that from Tossen. And you can see this is a later farmhouse that's been built. You can see this is a sort of um, gable end, stepped gable that has a, an air of crenellation about it. The tower itself is behind that, just in the trees. It's not one to, uh, I'm not going to spend too long on it more about thinking about the landscape it sits in because we are extraordinarily high up here and down there once again below the dark line of trees Tossum so these places all oh, focus in a minute these things do don't they they take their time and Tossum tower is just above those rather nice you can just see it above the sort of uh, the nice houses there and I've just swung away sadly sorry about that so these things have uh, quite an influence on the landscape and quite an influence on the history and the architecture this is uh, Morpeth and it's just on the edge of the main part of town it is in the town itself but this isn't a castle this is a gatehouse to a castle so this, you can see, looks like one of those towers, but it's just a section, a fraction of something that was there before. Um, and a rather fine uh, construction and design it is. So it actually, these things create a culture in their own right. Now off to chip chase. Unfortunately, some of these are taken on my phone because it's only open for one day a year or thereabouts. So this is a fine, very fine tower. Once again, um, it's part of somebody's house. Once again, it's had windows knocked into it and all of that, but you can see the overhanging projections. There would have been walls around those, what look like cogged teeth. And you can see the holes there that they could throw stuff down onto attackers from. But look at the splendor of the house that's attached. This gives you an idea of how these things evolve. 
So anyway, there we are with our uh, peel towers. Hope that was fun, and I hope it made sense. And maybe we'll do some more things like this in the future. So thanks for watching. Uh, more soon.